When this Jewish woman sings, people are instantly healed. Next, on this edition of It's Supernatural. Centuries have come and gone, offering wisdom and understanding throughout the ages. Today, there should be nothing beyond one's power to discover. And yet, the strange, unusual, and mysterious world of the supernatural defies understanding. Stay tuned for a unique and powerful investigation into a curious, undiscovered universe only on It's Supernatural. Hello. Sid Roth, your investigative reporter. I'm here with Jill Michaels. Now, what I want to know is, how does a Jewish young lady that is in conservative Judaism, bat mitzvahed, all of a sudden go into Buddhism, go into astrology? Why, Jill Michaels? Well, when I was 14, my brother was killed in a car accident, and I needed some answers. I needed to know what had happened, where he was. And there were no answers around me except prayers that said, um, we're exalting and magnifying God, and we'll find out one day. But I needed to know. But as a young child, you really loved God. Yes. I remember being a little girl, three years old, sitting in my bed, looking out the window in the backyard. I grew up in Long Island. And singing to him, uh, and thanking him for being Jewish. And I liked the house. I liked the family. Um, just loved him at that point. And I'd just sit there for hours and sing to him. That, that's highly unusual, but I bet he liked it. <laughs> no one taught me how to do it. I, I had remembered being with him. Hmm. Um, I remembered th that it was just such a choice that he made to make me this little girl with this family in this location, and I was just, gratitude so, was so, in my so, heart. So why, I mean, you're a nice Jewish girl. Why walk away from our tradition? I didn't feel like I was walking away. I felt like I couldn't find the encounter that I wanted. Mm. Um, I remember this very live, real encounter as a little girl, had grown up in synagogue, went to Hebrew school, was led the junior congregation, did all of those things. Mm -hmm. uh, but there were no answers for me inside the religion at that point. Um, I got platitudes and I needed something more. I wanted that power encounter that I had as a little girl again. Well, so what I began did you looking. find? What did you find? I found a lot of things that looked like power. Um, I looked in, as you said, with Buddhism and astrology, uh, trying to get closer, trying to touch. I found a spiritual world, but I didn't get any closer to him through the, all of this journey. But I did get close to a spiritual world. Now, you were pretty successful in the business world. Tell me about mm -hmm. that. Yeah, I, was, I graduated college when I was 20 because I had done high school four years and two years, and immediately uh, began running corporations. Um, did extremely well, and then by the time I was 22, I was running three associate corporations and consulting in a 12-city network. Um, so but, I but did that very well. But that wasn't fulfilling either. Then you went into singing? Yeah, singing is something I really had done all of my life, mm -hmm. um, but I began getting more involved in that from, at that point I had my own consulting business, so it was easy to start doing mm -hmm. some singing, and I did jazz singing and, and those things uh, in various clubs and work with a lot of musicians. But now your voice teacher was, had some pretty prominent students. Yeah, uh, his name was Carlo Minotti. He, um, Tony Bennett studied with him, and mm -hmm. uh, all the big wigs in Hollywood would come out to work with him. And he had heard my voice um, through the partner that I had at that point, uh, who was the critic for the Daily News in New York. And he began giving me free lessons to uh, work with him. It, it sounds good. Mm -hmm. And then one day you wanted to check out uh, a, a music group or a singing group a, at a church. Well, I had never been in a church, but there was an organist at a church up in Harlem in New York, mm -hmm. which is in the inner city area. And my business partner had said for me to go up there. Um, he thought maybe we could do some work together. So I went up there during a service. It's kind of a strange thing, a Jewish girl from a good Jewish background going into a church in Harlem? Extremely strange. Um, but it was a, a very fascinating experience for me. Um, growing up in New York, uh, being in an inner city area was not a big deal to me. But it was incredible. I walked into a church. It was me and about uh, 1,500, 2,000 African Americans. Uh, it's the headquarters church of a very large denomination. Mm -hmm. And I felt very much at home. I was very welcome there. Um, how'd you like the organ player? <laughs> he was great. And they had a 100-voice choir. Um, the music was wonderful. Um, I wasn't put off. There weren't crosses hanging everywhere. There was no um, uh, crucifix, which was something that really was not appealing to me. Because in all of my journey and all my looking for spiritual things, the one place I didn't look was Christianity. But something that you certainly was the last thing you wanted to happen, mm -hmm. in the natural, that is, mm -hmm. 
happen? It's hard for me to even understand it. Explain. Well, I had been searching for God through all of these experiences that I had right. gone through, and I had tastes of it. I had moments where I felt peace, where I felt everything kind of align itself, mm -hmm. but they were so fleeting. And I came to this place, and I heard them preach the gospel, uh, just speak the story of that the Messiah had already come. And I'd never heard that before. It was an incredible thing, because they did it from my Bible. And all of a sudden, the Messiah that I've been waiting for, I found out, according to them, was here. And that peace that had been so elusive all those years, all of a sudden, I just knew that I knew that I knew that I knew that this was right. It sounds too simple. You didn't have someone give you a, a lecture of a hundred <laughs> reasons why Jesus is the Jewish Messiah. It's just, so, so what did you do? Well, I had that relationship from when I was a little girl. So I began talking to the God that I knew as a little girl. And knowing him was like knowing someone a little bit at a distance. And so I began asking, is he really your son? Did the Messiah really come? They did something called an altar call. I had never seen anything mm -hmm. like this before. They prayed for people in the front of the, the building. And instead of just walking up the three rows, which would have been the easiest thing for me to do, I went all the way around the back. Because of all the things that I had tried and touched and, you know, in all of my journey, there was nothing that struck terror in my heart like this. This was frightening to me because if this was wrong, um, and if I was making the wrong choice. You were going against the God that uh, you loved. Very much so. See, somehow, and I can't explain why, when I did all these other investigations, I didn't feel like I was going against the God that I loved, somehow. Yet the Torah condemns these things. I didn't know that, though. Right. You know, there's a lot of Torah knowledge. Um, uh, Isaiah, I know now, condemns the things with astrology and all the rest right. of that. But I didn't know some of that then. Um, but I was just such a hunger, such a yearning to have that encounter again, to find him, to be able to talk with him, to have him a face-to-face -face encounter. When I was a little girl, my teachers in Hebrew school were from uh, the Israeli army. And I used to make them meet me when I was eight and nine and ten years old on the weekends to study scripture. I just wanted to find what was going on. Um, and that day when I heard this message, I knew that I knew it was right. Even though part of me was saying, what are you doing? Mm. So did you say a prayer? Well, I went all the way on their back and uh, kept asking, is he your son? Came forward and uh, this gentleman prayed Excuse for me. Excuse me, did you get an answer when you were asking? Uh, not then, but a few minutes later I did. Um, they prayed for me. And this is a, a, a congregation where they um, pray for you, and if you want to, they baptize you right then and there. Now, I knew about mikvah, so baptism was not a surprise to me. And they asked me, did I want to be baptized? And I have no idea why I said yes, but I said yes. That's outrageous, Jill. It really was. <laughs> what happened after you were, I mean, I, can you get this? A Jewish woman is baptized. Now, of course, the mikvah is where Christians got it from. Anything real authentic in Christianity is Jewish. But, I mean, it's outrageous. But the first time she hears, she accepts Yeshua, Jesus, as her Messiah. She gets water baptized, and wait till you hear what happened. We'll be right back after this. We'll return with Sid Roth and It's Supernatural right after this. Hello, YouTube Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word, it means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. <laughs> Hello, Sid Roth, your investigative reporter. Outrageous. This Jewish woman from a good Jewish background goes to a church for the first time in her life, and she not only goes forward and prays for Jesus to become her Messiah, but she gets water baptized. Jill, why did you do that with that good Jewish background? I was so hungry to meet God. I was so hungry to have Him. Like you said before, I, I had professional success. I had all these other things that were going for me, but nothing was meeting that need. That was the thing that was driving me more than anything else. And so it didn't matter. It didn't matter. I knew as I walked forward that I could possibly lose my family. Um, I knew that this was a tremendous cost and a tremendous price, but I just had to because I had to have Him. It was that driving inside of me. 
So I went forward and they asked me, did I want to be baptized? And they gave me to this woman who got me ready. Now, tell me about that supernatural language. <laughs> They have uh, rooms set up there where uh, you can change your clothing, mm -hmm. there's washers and dryers. And so she was taking me up the stairs to this. And this was an African-American woman who I found out later, I believe, had high school education. She was not an ancient scholar. Um, and when she took a few steps up the stairs and she said to me, when you come up out of the water, you might start speaking in tongues. I had absolutely no idea what this woman was talking about. Tongues to me was what was in my mouth. And I said, okay, fine. At the same time, I'm walking forward and saying, what am I doing? Back and forth. Is he really your son? And this is just going on inside of me. It's still a tug of war. Oh, it's on. an enormous one. It's an enormous tug of war. But I'm finding myself walking forward. Um, she took a few steps, and she raised her hands up in the air, and she started speaking. And she started speaking in Hebrew. And she said... How did she know Hebrew? She didn't know Hebrew. What did she say? She said, Deuteronomy 6.4, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And it blew my mind. I, it, it was so absolutely astounding. And it wasn't until later that I realized that my question, is he your son, was being answered in that, in that prayer that she prayed. Because it says, he is one, and that's a plural oneness. It was astounding to me. It was absolutely astounding. All the reservations were completely gone. Mm. And you, t you said that something supernatural happened. It was like spiritual scales came off? Explain. When I came out of the water, one, there was a sense of cleanness mm -hmm. inside and out that I had never experienced in my life. I didn't know I wasn't clean until that moment happened. It was an astounding thing. And at that moment, the Father, the God that I knew at a distance but knew and loved, all of a sudden it was just the curtain was, was taken away. The scales were gone. There was intimacy. There was closeness that was astounding to me. As close as you and I are sitting here, but even more so. So the tug of war was over? It was completely over at that moment. It was astounding. It was such an awareness of reality and such a continual awareness of reality. It wasn't a matter of peace for two seconds or three seconds. It was a continual peace because I had met him. And it was just, it was like everything went click, like was the tumbler went into place. Was this what you were searching for as a child and in, into the uh, various Buddhism mm -hmm. and astrology that you were into? I wanted to touch him. I wanted that alive, you know, I knew about Abraham talking with him and I knew about Moses talking mm -hmm. with him. And, you know, he's not, he doesn't make differences. Moses was not any more, you know, than I am or Abraham. I'm of that lineage also. I wanted that. I didn't want just religion. I wanted him. I wanted relationship. You said that this woman, who had no knowledge of Hebrew, mm -hmm. quoted Deuteronomy 6.4, mm -hmm. which is the Shema, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, mm -hmm. the Lord is one. Mm -hmm. There could not have been a better verse. How did she know the Hebrew? She didn't know the Hebrew. This was a gift um, that's called a gift of the Spirit, the Spirit of God. And God says, uh, he, he wants to tell his Jews about him. So he does some miraculous things sometimes. And this was a miraculous thing where he allowed this woman who didn't know anything to speak to me in the most powerful way that she possibly could. I would like you, right now, I'm going to put you on the spot, <laughs> sing that Deuteronomy 6-4 that mm -hmm. was quoted to you by the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. and, and when you sing this, mm -hmm. which is a powerful prayer from the Jewish scriptures, I believe that spiritual scales are going to come off of the eyes of Jewish people. Would you do that right now? Sure. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. It, it's so holy. I. I almost hate to be speaking right now. I believe that what you're experiencing in someone's neck was just healed. And someone that had a problem actually in their heel, if you move your foot, you'll see that you have been healed right now. And the spine has just, in someone's back has just been healed. Neck is very powerful. People's necks are being healed. All the pain is gone. Something that's like a band over someone's head, a headache, it's gone. 
That's because of the anointing or the manifest presence of God. You see, the Torah says that the anointing, the manifest presence of God, destroys the yokes mm -hmm. of evil. And that's what's happened. Jill, you have found mm -hmm. that when you sing or pray, people have been healed. Tell me about one healing. Well, there is, um, and even before that, I just wanted to say, if you feel your heart pounding right now, that's God. That's his spirit drawing and wooing you. And if you feel heat on your body, that's, that's his spirit. There was a woman who had fallen off a stage and shattered her arm. And she had surgery where they do, it looks like scaffolding with steel mm -hmm. around the arm. And this hand was several times larger than this one. And it was just this huge steel contraption. And I went, they brought me to her to, um, to pray for her. And I heard a series of three notes. You know, being a musician, I, um, I interpret the world mm -hmm. musically many times. And I heard a series of three notes, certain tones, in a certain rhythm, in a certain sequence, that I knew was to be sung to her. And I felt to just put my hands on the metal and to begin singing. They, she was can, a, can you just kind of give me a, a sh sing what you sang? Is that possible? I'm not sure I remember, but, but it was, to give me an idea. There weren't words with it. It was like, ah, ah, ah. And what happened? I put my hands on the metal, and this woman played piano, and they weren't mm -hmm. sure she'd ever play again. And as I put my hands on the metal, we watched her hand go back to normal size. And all of a sudden, she had motion in this hand that she didn't have before. Before your very eyes, you saw that? Oh, yeah, before my very eyes. How would you like to see that before your very eyes? If you're hungry, in the day that you seek God with all of your heart, in that day, he will be found. There's an if to the best of your ability. We're going to be right back. More, more miracles for you. Don't go away. Yes, healing is a very Jewish thing. Jill, would you agree? Very much so. Tell me about another person that was healed. Well, there's a gentleman who came to um, a meeting that I was having one night and he had a chemical burn on his arm. He was very fair-skinned. Mm -hmm. He was Hungarian, kind of my coloring. And he had um, a chemical burn that started on the upper part of his arm and went down to here and wrapped around his arm. His arm looked like black shoe leather. Mm. It had just happened that day, and around the edge of it, it, as it wrapped, was the very bright red skin. It must have been so painful. It was painful. It was ugly looking. The joint was all swollen. Whoa. And I spoke to a friend who is a practitioner, medical practitioner, and I was told that something like that would need skin grafts, there'd be a loss of mobility in the arm, it would be many, many months of any sort of healing that would happen. Well, why didn't he just go to the hospital? How come he came to this meeting? Well, he knew that healing could be there, and so that's why he came. Good reason. So, um, prayed for him. And I put my hand on his arm and we prayed that it be completely restored and that the healing power of Jehovah Rapha, God the healer, happened in his arm. And at the moment, it looked like nothing happened. I didn't particularly feel anything. You know, when I sang a few minutes ago, I felt something. That day when I prayed, I didn't feel anything. Didn't see any change. But he woke up the next morning and it peeled off in one piece. And underneath it was fresh, clean, pink skin. No scars, all gone. What is the difference? I mean, when you were involved in Buddhism and some mm -hmm. of these other things you were delving into, what do you see as the difference between knowing God through his son, Yeshua mm -hmm. and, and the Buddhism and, and the astrology. What's the difference? You're plugged into the power, the source, the creation of the entire universe. Um, you're not, it, the, the others in a sense almost feel like robbery. Um, you're doing things off on the side and trying to grab power and find power. Um, trying to use it yourself, trying to make yourself powerful. That's not the case here. Here you get plugged right into God, who is the power source. It's not me that did the healing, it's his power flowing through me because we know each other now, because we have relationship. There is nothing like knowing him face to face. It's that same way when I was a little girl, when I knew about him, but wanted more. You know, God told Moses, I have a special blessing I would like you to bless the people with. And from the mouth of God, Moses told Aaron this very, very special blessing. It's called the Aaronic Benediction. Not many people call it that, but I'm going to ask Jill to pray in Hebrew a blessing, and she's going to sing it, chant it, if you will, a blessing from God. 
And as she prays this blessing, then I'll, I'll pray it over you in English. This is a blessing that God commanded. It's a commanded blessing. And I'm going to believe that you will be saturated with shalom. Mm. Do you know what shalom is? Mm -hmm. Shalom, yes, it means peace and hello and goodbye, but it's more than that. It's wholeness. Mm. You'll be whole in body, soul, and spirit. That's why the Messiah came. He said, I've come to bring you peace, shalom, and peace more abundantly. And as Moses instructed Aaron, and I lift hands before you. Why hands? Because King David said, I lift holy hands to God. My hands are only holy, not because of me, but because I believe that Yeshua died. Jesus died for my sins, and by his blood, I'm forgiven. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his countenance to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord grant you his shalom in the name of the Tsar Shalom, the Prince of Peace, Yeshua HaMashiach Sikenu, Jesus the Messiah, our righteousness. And then all God's people said a Hebrew word, amen, or amen, which means, so be it. So be it, shalom. So be it, healing. So, so be it, deliverance. So be it, freedom. So be it, joy. So be it in Yeshua's name. Amen. So be it. Now, Jill, we've just got a few minutes left. What's God telling you? What's going on inside of you? I want people to understand that Yeshua is the Lamb. Uh, when we come together for Passover, we have a Passover Lamb, but He is the Lamb. And if they want today, um, He will write their name in the Lamb's Book of Life. That this is, uh, it can be an end of the struggle and an end of the journey, an end of religion and a beginning of coming to intimacy with Him. And I have good news for you. You don't have to be Jewish to believe in the Jewish Messiah. God so loves the whole world. Do you remember Jill talking about the big black church? If this big black church didn't have some people that loved God, she wouldn't be sitting here right now. Who knows what she'd be, where she would be. Praise God for black Christians. I believe that black Christians have a destiny with Jewish people. It wasn't an accident mm -hmm. that God used Afro-Americans to tell you about the Messiah. Well, they, they led Moses and the children of Israel through the wilderness. Moses' father-in-law was a black man. He was a Midianite. And so they had that role of leading them into the Promised Land. And, and, and there is a, there's a kindred of the slavery and the suffering of Jewish people That's and right. the slavery and the suffering of black people. Say this prayer with me. Repeat it after me. Dear God, come on now, say it with me because the spoken word is urgent. Dear God, please forgive me for every sin I've ever committed. Those that I know about, and those that I don't know about. Against you and you alone have I sinned. And I'm so sorry. I believe that Jesus died in my place. That Jesus is the Passover lamb that takes away the sins, my sins. And by his blood, 
I am forgiven. I am whole. I have peace with God. I have shalom with man. And now that I'm whole, I boldly say that Jesus is my Messiah and Lord. Lord Yeshua, that's his Hebrew name. Lord Yeshua, come inside of me. Take over my life. I make you Lord. Lord over every area of my life. Amen. Now lift your hand, holy hands to God and tell him you're thankful. Thank you, God. Thank you, Almighty God.